It's a video on using um, AutoCAD with a metric floor plan, a metric plot plan, where the metric plot plan is drawn in meters, where the metric floor plan is drawn in millimeters, and then setting up multiple views and paper space at scales that make sense. And the big issue here is the relationship between viewport scales and plot scales. So we're going to back up here and start off by taking a look at the floor plan. Here's the floor plan, which is a ranch house, basic ranch house American, just converted into metric. Um, actually a hard conversion, so a few changes are made. So you're going to start by drawing this, and you're going to use millimeters, 13,200 millimeters overall, 8,400 millimeters overall width. All your metric sizes should be even whole numbers if you can possibly do it, especially on an architectural drawing. And you can think of it, it it's really possible because two millimeters is very small. And if it's an architectural drawing, there's no reason in the world, unless you're doing something that has hardware in it, to be anything more precise than that. So those are the dimensions, and they're in the handout itself. Um, and when you start the drawing, and start a metric drawing. So the units that you'll be using will be in millimeters because that's the default with a metric drawing. Go ahead and draw it. Dimension it. And if you don't want to, you can hold off on dimensioning because you're going to have to put dimensions again in the plot plan because what we're going to do now is go to a plot plan and externally reference this drawing into the plot plan. So you've got this drawing done. You're all set. Now you go to the plot plan. Go right over here. See how simple this is? Anyway, here's your plot plan. If you take a look at this, those numbers on the bottom, those are the actual lengths of the pieces of property, the property lines, in meters, 16.49 meters. That's the bearing, and I've, this is fairly large text just so you can see it here. You'd have to probably make it smaller in yours. <clears throat> but the bearing is south 75 degrees, 57 minutes, 50 seconds east. The length of that is 16.49 feet. Comes all the way around. Do your drawing. When you get it done, bring the house in. So I've got this thing all done. Looks like that. And now I'm going to go and externally reference my metric floor plan, bring it in like this, saying specify on screen, scales 1, 1, and 1. I've got a relative path, so it's saved my path by indicating the relationship between the plot plan and the floor plan. Pick OK and go to put it in place. I'll just close out my external reference here. And I have something that's kind of funny, these things coming in. I'm going, this is my house. I wanted to put it right there. And now I start backing out, and I realize that I have a gigundus house, or is it gigundus? Enormous, or ginormous. Anyway, the house is way, way bigger than the piece of property. Let me get rid of my unreconciled layers. Way, way larger than the piece of property that I'm supposed to be placing it on. And way, way, by the way, means exactly 1,000 times bigger. So what's that, what's that problem? Well, I'm going to erase the uh, XREF, or maybe just undo it. We'll go through the XREF process again. In the plot plan drawing, when I type UN for units, it's also set up on millimeters. And yet, when I drew, I was drawing in meters. Well, 16.49 millimeters is not a very big piece of property. So what I want to do is say, no, no, I'm drawing in meters right now. And that's what's called an insertion scale. So when I insert or XREF something into this drawing, when it comes in, AutoCAD will check and see what were the units in the drawing you're bringing in, what are the units in the drawing into which it's coming, Let's reconcile it by either scaling up or scaling down the external reference. Since the external reference is done in millimeters, has a lot more units, this one is done in meters. When we bring it in, it's going to scale it down 1,000 times. So all right, we change that. Go to XREF. Find that drawing again. Attach the DWG. It's a floor plan. Comes in. Everything here is the same. They haven't changed anything here from scaling. I say OK. Close that out bring in my house and it fits right in, kinda. Put it over here just so we can see what's going on with it. Now if you do have dimensions in here, you're not going to be able to use them in this drawing because they're locked into the external reference and they will not auto automatically change even if they're annotative. They've got to be annotative in this drawing. So I'm going to go up to the layer command. When I go to layer command, I'm looking for all my externally referenced layers. They're not listed. Why? Because even though we use them in the externally referenced drawing. They are not being used in this drawing. Therefore, they're not being displayed. You have to go to All to see them. When you go to the All filter, they all show up with the name of the drawing, metric floor, appended to the beginning of each layer name. That's the dimension layer. If you look down here, you'll see it. I'm going to freeze that. Now they go away inside that XREF, and that's what I want here. 
I want to add my own dimensions in this drawing if I want to see them annotatively. Now I want to take that piece of property, I mean, I'm sorry, that building, get rid of my unreconciled layers again, and have it placed on the plot so that the front of the building lines right up here. So let's call, it's a funny kind of place, okay, right there. Let's call that our front door. <clears throat> so we want that edge right there lined up with this property line and inside a three meter offset. Um, so what I'm going to do is to offset by three, setback is what it would be called, but offset's a command to do it. I'm going to offset three, which means the building has to be entirely inside that three meter offset from the building, from the uh, property line. Well, I'm going to take this building and put it in here, but you'll notice that it's going to be kind of a tight fit. So what I want is to probably put that corner right there, and then maybe I'd rotate it down so it lined up here. Wouldn't be that hard to do, but let's take a look at the align command to see how nice this is. If I say let's align that building so that that corner right there sits here, and that corner right there gets as close as possible to this one, enter. Do we want to scale the building? No, we don't want it to get big enough to fit on that whole line. Jumps in like so. Got enough clearance here sitting right in the corner there, erase our setback line, now the building sits in there just fine. We need to go set it up in a layout before we add any dimensions. The dimensions are going to have to be annotative, so let's go and make a layout. I'm going to start by creating a brand new layout. So I go over here and it looks like that. It's a piece of A-sized paper. Kind of, you know, thinking, alright, that doesn't look too bad. Let's say I want it to be, probably we would do this on a bigger sheet of paper, by the way, but just to make it as hard as possible, I kind of go, alright, that looks pretty good to me right there. I want the property to look like that. Now, how close is that to a reasonable scale? You know, you're probably going to look at a 1 to 100, maybe a 1 to 200, maybe 1 to 500 scale between the drawing and the object. So you're going to look at your viewport scale and are surprised to see that it says 2.8. Well, 2.8. Uh, let's see, maybe 4 to 1. And 4 to 1 is surprisingly close to what we want. Let's bring it down here, and 4.1 is what we want. Now, how can it be that the scale here means that the sheet of paper is five times bigger than the property? That's the question. Well, let's take a look at what we have. We're looking at two different things. We're looking at the viewport scale, and we're looking at the plot scale. The viewport scale, let's call it VPS, has model space units on one side, four of them, to paper space units on the other, I'm sorry, paper space units on one side, four, the paper space on the left, to model space units on the other side, which is one. Four to one is what that means. Four model space units or paper space units. Oh, the one on the left is paper space, so four millimeters, that's how the paper is measured, to one, would we draw in again, piece of property? Oh yeah, meter. Four millimeters to one meter is the same as four millimeters to one thousand millimeters which is the same as a 1, 2, how many times does 4 go into 1,000? 250. So the actual scale here, the plot scale, is 1 to 250. That makes more sense. That piece of property is 250 times larger than the drawing. 4 to 1, though, makes sense as a viewport scale because the units we're using on the sheet of paper are so tiny in comparison to the units used for the drawing itself. Go ahead and add another detail view. I'll just get some of this out of the way. Maybe bring that over here like so. Bring that off to the side a little bit. Bring that in here like so. Okay, now, we've got a detail over here, and the first thing I notice is I want to put a house detail in, and I'd like the house to be lined up. That's where you go to the user coordinate system, rotate it around the z-axis, pick the two endpoints of the house like so, say so make that zero, do a plan view, looks like that. Now we're going to zoom in a little bit. Let's say we want that to be a little bit bigger. That one's 1 to 250 with a viewport scale of 4 to 1. Let's zoom in here. Let's see if we can make that viewport scale something like, I don't know, 10 to 1. 10 to 1 is just a little bit too big, and I didn't do a very good job when I selected my two points. It's kind of skewed there, you can see, but that's okay. I'm going to live with it. So there's my house laid out. You know what? I can't live with it. So let me just pause. Uh, okay, so now I've got um, this zoom to 10 to 1. I look down here and it says 10 to 1. Well, what does that mean? It does mean the same thing. It means there are 10 units in paper space equal to 1 unit in model space. 
So if I come in here and say, all right, let's label this. We'll put a six millimeter height for the title, so house detail. Go back in and add the scale. We'll say, okay, the scale in this case, the scale in this case is, well, what? 10 to 1. Well, we can't put 10 to 1. That would make no sense. That means that the piece of paper is 10 times bigger than the house. But if 10 millimeters into, is to 1 meter, that's 10 to 1,000, which is 1 to 100, which is, in fact, the scale of the house detail. Now let's go and copy this. Bring that up here. Maybe we'll make it a little smaller. And I want, say, a kitchen detail. So I want the kitchen detail to be at a different scale. So if I go in here and say, well, let's just make that 20 to 1. Notice 20 to 1 doesn't show up there. So we can go over here <clears throat> and then zoom 20xp. And then we get 20 to 1. Kind of pull the kitchen down into place. Now this, 20 to 1, that's twice as big as it is down here. If it's twice as big as it is down here, it must be a different scale. What would the scale be? Well, again, if we do the math and say 20 to 1, where it's 20 millimeters to 1 meter, which is 20 millimeters to 1,000 millimeters, which is 1 divide 20 into 1,000, and you get 50. Now, if that's 1 to 50 and that's 1 to 100, it makes a lot of sense that this would be twice as big as that is, just like a quarter inch equals a foot would be twice as big as an eighth inch equals a foot. Now, you see, if we come in here again, look over here, 20 to 1 shows up here as a custom scale. If it shows up as a custom scale, could we use it again? So could I put it over here? Take a look, 20 to 1 right there, even though it wasn't there before. Once you add it, by zooming XP, it becomes a custom scale in this drawing only, by the way. So that's what you're going to end up with when you're done. is three different viewports. Obviously, you need to have a larger sheet of paper. You need to put a border on it. Your, your, the scales you use are going to be different from this one, because I did this on an a size sheet of paper. So you're going to need to use different scales. But make sure you understand, when you're done, the relationship between viewport scale and plot scale. And the viewport scale, plot scale is simple. And you've always known it. If you looked at a map, and that map said the scale is 1 inch, equals one mile, even though there's a one on the left and a one on the right, that does not mean it's a one-to-one -one scale. In this case, think of that as the case. The viewport scale might be one-to-one, -one, but the actual plot scale would be one inch to one mile, which would be one to 5,280 times 12.